There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do and I go wild. Car 54, where are you? I didn't want to give the guy a ticket when he opened that big mouth. It's his ears. Well, Mr. Spaceman, how do you like it on the moon? Hmm? Well, don't break it. It belonged to my grandfather. This is very precinct, Sergeant Abrams. Mm -hmm. Lady, you'll have to call the Humane Society. You're welcome. Go chase monkeys. Keep <laughs> safe, Tony. Not again. We just... All right, okay, I'll tell you. Say, Andy. Yes, sir? Uh, will you get me the incoming roll book? Uh, I don't have my shoes on. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> you guys on the gift committee? Oh, no. He's not going to call another meeting. Tootie called. Don't go home. Wait for him. We must have been out of our minds when we elected him head of the gift committee. He's making it his life's work. <laughs> Cushion. Hey, fellas, wait. I... <laughs> Something came up. We gotta hold another meeting. They thought it was said we're getting them a watch. For three weeks we've been voting on it. All we have to do is to get Sergeant Abrams a gift for his 25th year in the forest. For heaven's sakes, dude, let's get this thing over with. What, do you want to hold a meeting right here in front of Sergeant Abrams? What a committee they stuck me with. You watch it again. I thought you men were off duty. Haven't you got homes? Are you signing in or are you writing a novel? <laughs> what do you men gathered around? Oh, no, you didn't call another meeting. Well, Captain, there's a right way of doing things. How would I... you know? <laughs> For three weeks, you've disrupted. Look who I'm talking to, Muldoon. He's your partner. Talk to him. Oh, look, Cap, it's the first time the Precinct Brotherhood Club has elected him to a public office. He's nervous. You're nervous. But I thought it was all <laughs> settled. You were getting him a watch. What happened? What kind of a gift is a watch? A guy works in the supermarket two weeks. When he quits, they give him a watch. This is something special. This is for Sergeant Abrams. Oh. You know how we feel towards him. Remember before his feet went bad, he used to stand inspection for us. He used to run around and do us all favors. Well, we love him, and we want to get him something that shows that love. Why don't you get him a charm bracelet? <laughs> How'd you find out? Oh, no, you're not getting him a charm bracelet. Well, it ain't exactly a charm bracelet, sort of an identification bracelet. And the jeweler let me have it, so I show it to you guys when we vote on it. Another vote? Well, Captain, there's a right way... Quiet! <laughs> now, look, Tuddy, this is the last meeting. You change your mind once more about that gift, and I'll change your means of transportation from riding in a nice, soft patrol car to pounding a heartbeat. Now get upstairs and get it settled. Sergeant, a burglary. Ma'am? Oh, have a dash for Harry. Back again. We found the stuff in his sister's place. He went and woke the baby. <laughs> Come on, Harry. Look at the way a man carries a garment. He's drinking it. Now, here's the identification bracelet. This is something he never in the world would think of buying for himself. The jeweler told me it's the only one of its kind in the whole city. Look, it's great. It's beautiful. Get it and let's go home. Yeah, we approve. Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. We gotta take it to a vote. A vote? We already said we liked it. Do you mind? Do you mind <laughs> if once we do things the right way with regular parliamentary procedure? <laughs> now, does the chair hear a motion to get Sergeant Abrams an identification bracelet? Yes. I move we get Sergeant Abrams an identification bracelet. You're out of order. 
What do you mean, I was born? <laughs> because there was a previous most maiden past to get Sergeant Abrams a watch. We gotta cancel that one first. Oh, brother! <laughs> I move that we cancel the previous motion to get Sergeant Abrams a watch. I second it. All those in favor, raise your right hands. Carry it. Now, do I hear any other motion? I move that we get Sergeant Abrams an identification bracelet. I second it. A motion was made and seconded to get Sergeant Abrams an identification bracelet. I now throw it open for discussion. <laughs> what discussion? What discussion? We didn't say what kind of a bracelet we want to get him. What kind? The kind you just showed us. Well, why wasn't it the motion? Now we have to vote on an amendment. Now that doesn't for me. Now, wait, wait, a minute, wait, a wait a minute, brothers. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. You guys elected Gunther your chairman. Let me tell you something about Gunther Tootie. I've been his partner for nine years. For nine years, every day, I've been sitting next to him, listening to him. I've had a chance to study him, get to know what kind of a man he really is. Now I know. He's a nut. A nut! You don't argue with a nut. You don't reason with a nut. You just let him do it his way, OK? Thanks for backing me up, Francis. Now, do I hear an amended motion contingent? Oh, that doesn't look at me. All right, what's up? Nothing. Why? Why? I walk into a room, suddenly it's quiet. Hey, the Yankees, I think they'll oh, fall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on, what's going on? Oh, uh, Sarge, uh, gee, uh, that looks pretty nice. What is it? It's an identification bracelet. Gee, I never saw one like that before. I did. My wife did. <laughs> An identification bracelet. She expects me to drop that on the street, so I have to be identified. But she bought it, so I wear it. Personally... <laughs> What's going on here? Just identify the goods you think was stolen from your store, Mr. Kissel. I'll check it. This looks like mine. I don't know about this. Oh, that's what I'm sure of. Belongs to my brother-in-law. Say, Lieutenant Corbett, can we use this room for a short meeting? Sorry, Tootie, can't you see we're busy? We'll meet in the detention cell. We'll meet nowhere. I'm going home. Me too. Hey, fellas, where you going? Come on, I'll drop you off. What a bunch of goofballs. I gotta get him something. Why don't you help me, Francis? Look, Gunther, I'm out of it. I don't want to get involved. Oh, gee, my first time as a chairman of a gift committee, I want to make good. I, you know, especially for Sergeant Abrams. I'd like to get him something real nice, like a... Hey, a smoking jacket. I bet he'd like this. Look how rich it looks. Hey, Francis, feel this velvet. That's velour. Oh. <laughs> Uh, were you looking for something in velvet? <laughs> well, we haven't decided yet. We're just looking around. Take your time. How about a lounging robe, huh? I think I have one here. <laughs> Put it aside myself. Look how they louse up my stock. <laughs> here we are. Now, this is a garment. Look at that. <laughs> Fully lined, huh? Look at the collar. Hand stitched. Do you know clothes? Look the way they're set in there. The sleeves, huh? Beautiful. What do you say? No. Looks baggy. Looks baggy. What do you think this is? A walk-up? We alter. We'll take the shoulders up a smidgen. <laughs> wait a minute. We'll tuck it in here to give you the wait a minute. The sleeve will short. Wait, wait, hold it. It's not for me. It's for Sergeant Abrams downstairs. Why didn't you say so? I love that guy. Come here. I don't want to say this in front of Mr. Kissel, but... Uh, this junk isn't for you. Now, there's a little store on Southern Boulevard, the little camper shop. They've got a dressing gown there. I've been dying to get my hands on it for months. The owner must nail the windows down or something. <laughs> Listen, that dressing gown shrieks for Sergeant Abram. What's the use talking? Don't waste any more time. Go right down there and get it. See, we only got $25 to spend. You got a prisoner for a Yeah, Ed, well, pick him a up. Oh, it's you, Harry. Uh, just a minute, Ed. Can't you raise another 10 bucks? Not without another meeting. That's impossible. Come on. Uh, wait a minute, Ed, please. <laughs> Lieutenant? Yeah? What have you got on me? Level with me. Possession of stolen property. Possession of Section 1308, 1 to 3. I'll get Murray the lawyer, pay him for the last case. I should be out by, uh... 
Listen, can you wait six months? I'll get you the dressing gown for nothing. Put down that dress. I'm going to the shop on Southern Boulevard. Don't tell him I sent you. Yeah. Are you interested in buying something? Are you kidding? This junk ain't for us. Come on, let's go, Francis. Sal, so you're imagining things. I tell you, they all know something, and they haven't got the heart to tell me. Tell you what? It's obvious. Word came from headquarters that in two weeks, when my 25 years are up, they're going to force me to retire. You retire? <laughs> she laughs. The department wants youth. A man reaches the 25-year mark, they start looking for reasons to retire him. And with my feet, how far do they have to look? <laughs> Oi! Oi! Stop, Oi! Stop worrying. Captain Black won't let you go. And the men all love you. Sure. They loved Sergeant Sweeney, too, didn't they? So what happened? One day, to a total stranger who was hanging around the station, Sweeney starts telling him about his arthritis. The total stranger turns out to be a police surgeon from downtown. The next day, Sweeney is retired. Finished. That's how they do it. A total stranger? A total stranger. No, no, no. I'm not giving up without a fight. Let them send someone. I'll show them a man in the prime of... Oh! Oh! <laughs> hey, Francis, come on out here and see how it looks in the light. Will you buy it? Let's go. I'll put it in a nice box. No, no, wait. I want to see how Sergeant Abrams is going to feel when he walks around in this thing. <laughs> Do you mind? Do you mind? <laughs> ooh, ooh. Francis, come here. Ooh, come here. Will you buy the dressing gown and let's go? What dressing gown? That's no gift for Sergeant Abrams. There's the perfect gift. A pair of orthopedic shoes? Could you think of a better gift? Think of those poor, broken-down feet of Sergeant Abrams. It'll be a new world for him. <laughs> what do you say, Francis? How about it? Well, where's the phone? Hey, where are you going? Well, I gotta call another meeting. Another meeting? Well, it's twice our budget. It's $50. This calls for a vote. Another vote? Teddy, are you crazy? I can't... All right, okay. 1191 Southern Boulevard. All right. 53 PX to dispatch. Half cars 41 and 362 proceed to 1191 Southern Boulevard to give aid and assistance to car 954, K. Okay? Now, this is our Lady Belladonna model, and this is our casual. <laughs> No, wait, wait a minute, fellas. Hold it, wait a minute. He changed his mind about the gift. Oh! Wait, now wait a minute. We're getting Sergeant Abrams some orthopedic shoes. Orthopedic? Where? What's that? All those in favor, raise their right hand. Carrie. Great. See you. Wednesday, Mrs. Krieg. Yes, officers? Oh, he's going to handle everything. Yes? We want to buy a pair of those orthopedic shoes. Oh, yes, of course. Well, now, which of you gentlemen wants the shoes? Oh, they're not for us. Well, then... They're for Sergeant Abrams. Abrams? Sal Abrams. Sal Abrams. Well, now, if you'll have Sergeant Abrams come here on Thursday... Uh, oh, he can't come in. Oh, he can't come in. Oh, he mustn't know a thing about it. Oh, he mustn't know a thing about it. <laughs> Four o'clock. <laughs> I beg your pardon, did you say he mustn't know a thing about it? That's the whole idea, it's a surprise. Yeah, we didn't want him to know anything until we put the shoes on his feet at his party next week. I'm afraid you gentlemen don't understand. These are orthopedic shoes. I must fit them scientifically to Sergeant Abrams' feet. I must observe the way he walks, I must analyze his old shoes for stress points. I must put his feet in plaster. Good, as long as he doesn't suspect a thing. <laughs> But I can't observe a man's feet, measure them, and put them in plaster without him suspecting a thing. 
<laughs> He's got to suspect something. <laughs> Not if we use our heads. For instance, uh, why must he come here for you to observe him? You come down to the station and observe his feet there. The police station? Yeah, just like natural. People go in and out all day. We get off duty at 4 o'clock. We'll come down and pick you up and take you down to the station. Now, just look at his feet. You'll never notice a thing. <laughs> I can't do a thing with him. We better take him over to see the doc. Doctor? That's what happens when you let children in the pool room. What led? He ran in and had it in his mouth before anyone saw him. Oh, oh they... Hey, Sarge, we're gonna take the kid over to see the doc. Come on. At home, he doesn't need a thing. <laughs> all right. All right. No, no total stranger here. What do you mean, stop worrying? They send them around when you least expect it. That's how they... <laughs> He's here. <laughs> Anderson, have someone run this upstairs to the detective squad. Here. I'll run it up. Sal, wait! Sal, you? You run up the stairs? Why not? I need the exercise. After all, a man in prime condition should keep himself that way. <laughs> well? He went by so fast, I couldn't observe anything. Well, get him on the way down. I'll call him. He got to the top of the stairs and just collapsed in my arms. <laughs> Sergeant Abrams! Coming. Coming! <laughs> Sal, watch out! Sal, <laughs> Sal, Andy, call a doctor. Right. I'll get some water. Stop! It was just a slip. We'll be up. Sal, okay, don't I'm be fine. a fool, Sal. A slip by a man of your age? Mage, mage. What's a slip to a man when he's in the prime of condition? Why, I, I could run up and down those stairs all day if I... Where is he? Where is who? The little guy from downtown, the doctor with the mustache. Mustache? <laughs> Sal, you're in shock. He was just here, snooping around. Tootie, you saw him. Where's Tootie? Well, Muldoon, you, you, you... Where's Muldoon? He was here, Captain, looking at my... at my... Where's my shoe? <laughs> Picarpal arch has flattened the occipital bone, causing degeneration of the tarsal system. See, isn't that wonderful? Just some Sal's old shoe. He's got that all figured out. I told you it could be done. Say, when can we pick up the shoes? The party is Saturday. The shoes? I can't even start without a moulage of his feet, the plaster cast. Yeah, that's right. Now, how can we get his feet in plaster? Without him knowing a thing about it. Absolutely. Well, Mrs. Abrams, will you do it? To see a smile like that on my soul's face, I'll do anything. Sal? <laughs> Sal? So. So. Boy, Mrs. Abrams, those sleeping pills sure worked.
Hey, Francis, can I do that? <laughs> can I do the other one? Somebody laugh. <laughs> Sandra? What is it, Sal? I heard a noise. A noise? <laughs> what noise? Sleep again. <laughs> Imagine falling on a bed on my jaw. That's what Sandra says happened one night last week. Imagine that. What nightmares I had. Hey, Tootie, remember that little guy with the mustache I thought was a doctor? I dreamed I caught him in my bathroom. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Sergeant Abrams, would you mind going to the back room and starting out duty reports before we go home? Forgot again. If it's just once, once you fellas to remember and not wait till the last. Oh, he's a This way, please. Ah, well, what's the matter? It's a party. A party. It's a glorified foot examination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like Sergeant Sweeney. They threw him a party, gave him a watch, and the next day he was retired. You couldn't wait. You couldn't wait. They couldn't even wait until tomorrow to give me an examination. No, 25 years and out. It would hurt them. It would hurt them if I spend an extra day on the force. You try your best. Break your feet. And what have you got? <laughs> What's that, new shoes? They were made especially for you, Sal, by Mr. Webster. He's a shoemaker? <laughs> Orthopedist. Would you try them now, please? Attention, folks, please, please. Sal, I've got a lot of telegrams here for you, but I want to read this one first. Congratulations, may you be with us another 25 years. The Commissioner. Sal, Sal, you can read the rest of them later. There's just one more thing I want to say. Sal, I hope that I get one-tenth the love and the affection the men have shown you when I complete my 25 years on the force next month. The men have shown that... <laughs> Don't do it. Don't... Muldoon, stop him, stop him. I won't have a gift. Don't do it. I'll get myself transferred. 
throat. I don't want any gifts, buddy. Stop it. Stop it, Tootie. Don't do it. Come on, do it. There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you?